Morning Fresh Dreams. Uh, so it's day two, it's Tuesday, and it's good to be with you to bring you these morning devotions. I'm Ruth Rice, a Director for New Wellbeing. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40 over these three days and bringing some words of well-being into a time that's been really difficult to lead through. So uh, we're going to use our morning prayer again, but actually I'm going to use lunchtime prayer from the Renew Prayer Rhythms. Um, I know it's not lunchtime, so don't go and grab your lunch, <laughs> but you saw morning prayer and how that would go yesterday. We used Psalm, Psalm 103 verses 1 to 4. So I'm just going to lead you as we would do at noon, the lunchtime prayer now um, as we start this day. So again, we would start with the meditation of the day, which is from the Psalm of the Week. But for today, we take that Psalm 46 that says, be still and know that I am God. And at lunchtime we use the Lord's Prayer like this. Our Father in heaven, honoured be your name. So let's just begin by honouring his name. Think of his name. He is our Father. And just begin to speak out his name. To bless him for who he is. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Massive. So begin to speak out the names of places and situations on earth that need a touch of heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So begin to thank him first for daily bread. He is our bread. He is enough for us. And then just a word or a sentence of something you're thankful for. And then we ask him. Ask him for what you need. He is a good father. Maybe some healing for someone at home. Maybe a miracle in your own life. Maybe something you've seen on the news. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So receive his forgiveness at the cross again for this day and choose to forgive the slights and offences of others. And lead us not into temptation. So ask him to lead you the other way. Name the temptation and ask him to lead you the other way. And deliver us from evil, so that we sit in solidarity with the persecuted church every single day in our renewed space. It's knowing that he will be the deliverer. We ask for courage for our persecuted brothers and sisters. And we also pray each day for those for whom the darkness is coming from within their own heads, those who feel oppressed from inside their heads, that, that they would be delivered and set free from despair today. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are his forever and ever. And we use the words from Faldi Brennan Daily Office, which are these, keep us in the beautiful attitudes, joyful, simple and gentle. And may the favour of the Lord our God be on us. Establish for us the work of our hands, Lord. Establish the work of our hands. Amen. So that's lunchtime prayer, so don't get too confused if you just dialed in on that and thought I must have missed half my day. Um, we're on the second day of Fresh Dreams and looking at Isaiah chapter 40. Yesterday we looked at the word comfort and what that means and what that says in the in the Hebrew. And today I just want to take it a little bit further. And uh, from verse nine, we start talking about the greatness of God. And then it takes it into um, beautiful verse 11, where it says about the character of God. It says he will tend his flock like a shepherd. Isaiah 40 verse 11. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. And it goes on, who has measured out the waters in the hollow of his hands? Who has, it's just like wonderful, wonderful description of, of God's character and greatness. To whom, verse 18, will you liken God? And who will you compare him with? 
Do you not know, verse 21, have you not heard? Do you not understand? It's he who sits above the circle of the earth. And it goes on into, you know, to whom will you compare in verse 25? And who should I, who should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created all these, who brings out the host by number. This is the great God that we are coming to this morning. The greatness of our God. But I want to bring you the word, gather. If you look at verse 11, it says, he will gather the lambs in his arms. There's your little phrase or your word to remember for today. He gathers. I kind of love this, this gathering word. Again, I love the Hebrew of this, as you know. And the Hebrew word here is kabatz, where he kabatz is where he's collecting things together and he's gathering everything up and he's sort of grasping things in his hands and uh, and and it's this things it's it's this idea that no lamb is going to be left without a shepherd that the shepherd is going to gather up and collect to him every little lamb it kind of has rem reminiscences, doesn't it, of the good shepherd and, and that beautiful uh, story of the, the shepherd leaving the 99 behind and going looking for the one. One of the things in our Renew Spaces that we constantly speak about is this, this is about the one. We're not setting up programmes for the church. We're looking for where is the one, the one person that we're there for. This, this economy of one we just think is really important that we remember. This is not ever about big numbers. And so I just wanted to bring you this beautiful image of him gathering us together. And when we do our Lord's Prayer, which is why I did that this morning, there is a sense that we're gathered in prayer, that he invites us to gather together and pray that, that he, our Father brings us into this same language and story. And so this word gather has been really important to um, to me as well in the charity, uh, the wonderful Pete, who's one of our leaders, uh, gave me a word earlier on in the year about uh, us gathering in renew spaces, the ones that were kind of seed producing. And some of you are running those renew spaces and thank you so much. And they're beginning to be able to train and teach other people to give away what they're learning to. And that, that gathering in um, is like a, a harvest image too. So there's a gathering coming together and there's a gathering that's like harvest. And then there's this beautiful idea too, that you're gathered right into his chest, that he carries you close to his bosom, it says, to his heart. Isn't that a lovely image? I remember um, hearing that a, a newborn baby looking at their mother, that their heart will begin to beat at the same time that their, their, their breathing and their heartbeats will eventually become the same if they gaze into each other's eyes. How lovely is that? And, and this, this invitation to intimacy with God, to be gathered up by him, not to try hard all the time, but just to let him gather us together to him. It's where we find our unity with each other when we are gathered to him. And so that a lot of our Renew Rhythms as well are about spending time in the choir in his presence together this is not just about your individual kind of journey with god and how much you're spending time with him on your own there's a sense in which as he gathers the one he gathers them all <laughs> and we'll find each other the closer we get to him i i've been kind of aware because of covid and because of the restrictions on us getting together how much we need each other how much we need to feel his heartbeat together, just to be together in his presence. I mean, I'm thankful for this technology, aren't you? I'm just sick of it. I want to be with real people where the heartbeat and the shared air is filled with his presence. And one day, one day this too will pass and we will be. In the meantime, this word gather, I think brings me much comfort because we are the followers of a God who has already gathered us. He's come and found us. He's gathered us to his heart. He's carrying us close to his bosom and he's doing the same for all the other sheep. And so there's this sense of we're not on our own. We're all gathered into him. And so I think it, we use the word gathering a lot, don't we, in churchy circles as leaders. But we're talking about meetings really mostly when we talk about that. We're talking about 
hard work and putting on the you know the show and I'm, I'm not being too rude I hope about what we do on Sundays but could we reimagine the gathering as a little bit more like what God does here it comes on the back of the comfort that we spoke of yesterday a God who is the shepherd who gathers us in and he gathers us in to comfort us and to speak tenderly to us and for us to receive his love and it's full of that sense of being carried and that's when Isaiah is able to speak of how wonderful God is the greatness of God it doesn't come out of kind of g in it up it comes out of this deep carried intimacy church I think it's time I think it's been time for a long time for us to find our language of prayer again to discover the practice of the presence of God, to spend time gathered into his chest, his bosom, together. There's lots of times when our gathering together is about the busy stuff, the, 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 the vocal stuff. And that's the things we've had to shut down, isn't it, during this, this lockdown. And it's caught some of us on the hop because we've been told by the government we're allowed to pray together, but we haven't kind of known how to do that. We haven't had a rhythm and a language of prayer ready it's time we are the people of prayer church we are the people of the presence of God and that no global pandemic can ever stop the presence of God no nothing in all the world can stop us from practicing together the presence of God even if it means that what we're, where we're doing it is on a different platform uh, where we're online rather than in person or we're in our homes at the same time connected by his presence but practicing a similar rhythm i think that's what's been really helpful for those of us who have had this rhythm of prayer at nine in the morning at 12 and at the end of the day is we haven't felt disconnected from each other we've missed each other yes but we have connected dispersed or gathered the gathering is not something we do it's something that God has already done when he died and rose again he made it possible for all of us to be gathered into him and so there is a time now of gathering gathering those who are lost and gathering those who are afraid and gathering those who have no hope there's a time of harvest to be had and and I think personally maybe I'm a bit biased I still think that's around these rhythms of prayer around the place of peace and around the, the language of well-being that said, yes, it feels like everything has gone, that we knew. There is hopelessness for some where there was once hope. But be comforted, speak tenderly, be gathered back into his, his bosom. <laughs> and there you'll find each other again, but maybe with a new language, maybe with no words necessary. Maybe there's more of the practice of silence needed. Maybe there's still places where revival will happen. And so I pray for you today, this day, that as you explore that a little bit more, look into the character of God, that the identity crisis that many of us go through, which isn't about our own identity, it's about his identity, that we will again realise the God that we are following and serving and loving today is the one who gathers you in, you. Not because he wants to use you you're not a spatula he loves you he gathers you if you're feeling like you're the lost one just cry out again we cry last time with the comfort we cry we cry out for comfort this time when we're feeling lost and we need gathering we cry it seems like crying's okay crying out to him is okay and he will come and gather us and in the gathering, oh, I'd love for by the time we meet again next year, we have a different language around what church even looks like. And so many people wanting to be gathered into him that we have to think of new ways to do that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to smile on you and give you his peace today. I'll see you tomorrow. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but was
Begun. 